In this problem, we're going to solve this inequality, graph the solution set on the real number line, and write the answer in interval notation. Well, what type of inequality is it? As you can see, I have x's in the denominator, so it's a rational inequality. And before we do anything else with rational inequalities, or rational equations for that matter, is we should always write up here the domain. we need to figure out for which values of x this expression is undefined. That means when is the denominator equal to zero, because remember we cannot divide by zero. So we solve this little problem here, x plus 7 cannot equal zero. That means if I subtract 7 from both sides, we know x can never equal negative 7. And we're going to need this when we're trying to write our final answer. Okay, so now let's go back to the inequality. We're going to solve this by the boundary point method. The boundary point method says if you can figure out the points at which this inequality could change from a true to a false, then all I have to do is put those boundary points on the number line and test each region. In order to find the boundary points of a rational function, we need the rational function in a specific format. We need to have 0 on one side. We need to have all the other terms on the other side, and if there are several terms, we need to combine them over a common denominator. Well, luckily, this problem is set up in the perfect form. I have 0 on one side. And on the other side, I have everything over a common denominator of x plus 7. So we're ready now to find our boundary points. Once it's in this format, we find the boundary points by setting this fraction here equal to 0. A fraction is equal to 0 when the numerator is equal to 0. So we set the numerator equal to 0. Add 2 to both sides, we get x equals 2 as a boundary point. Then we find another boundary point by setting the denominator equal to 0 when it is in this format. So I have x plus 7 equals 0. Uh, subtract 7 from both sides, x equals negative 7. That is another boundary point. Now this might look a little confusing because up here I said x cannot equal negative 7. Well, x equals negative 7 is a boundary point because that is a point at which this inequality can change from true to false. So points that are not in the domain can cause the inequality to change from true to false. So therefore, I have these two boundary points, so I need to graph them on the number line. And hopefully I can get my pen to work fairly well. Okay, so I have 1 at negative 7 and 1 at 2. So notice this divides the number line into three regions. Excuse my bad handwriting here. There's the region that's to the left of negative 7, the region between negative 7 and 2, and the region to the right of 2. So what I have to do is I have to find points in each of these regions. I'm going to call them test points. And if I look in this first region anywhere between negative infinity and negative 7, I can't use the um, boundary points, but I can use any other point in there. So I'm going to pick, let's say, x equals negative 9. What I do is plug negative 9 in for x in my original inequality and see if I get a true or a false statement. Negative 9 minus 2 over negative 9 plus 7, is it greater than or equal to 0? I think I need to scroll up a little bit. So negative 11 over negative 2, is that greater than or equal to 0? The negative divided by negative is a positive. Is 11 halves greater than or equal to 0? Yes, that is a true statement. Therefore, I want to have everything on this side, everything to the left of negative 7. So I need this whole region here. 
Oh, my pen's not working very well, excuse me. Let's see if I can get it to stick this time. Hopefully you can see I need this region over here. Okay, so while I had it on pause, I went in and wrote the next steps down. So I have a test point in between negative seven and two. I picked X equals zero. And I plug that into my original inequality and I get this statement which lands up at is negative two sevenths greater than or equal to zero. No, a negative number is not bigger than or equal to zero. It's false. I do not want this region. Now I picked any point. I can pick any point bigger than two. I picked x equals four. Again, plug four into my original inequality is four minus two over four plus seven greater than or equal to zero is two over 11 greater than or equal to zero. True. Therefore, I want this region. So I'm going to shade this in if my pen allows me to shade it in. And so I need that region too. So now my solution set consists of this region and this region. And I need to decide what I'm going to put on the endpoints. Do I put square brackets or parentheses? Well, if you look at the original inequality, it looks like I need to put square brackets on my endpoints. But remember, the reason we did this to begin with was that we needed to make sure that we didn't include negative seven in our solution. So I cannot put a square bracket on the negative seven. I have to use a parentheses on the negative seven. But there's no problems over here with the two. I can put a square bracket on that one. So let me scroll down and what my solution set looks like in interval notation starts at negative infinity to negative seven. with the parentheses on the negative seven, unioned with square bracket, positive two to infinity.